School has begun. I missed last week's, but I am back with another episode of Full Run Friday, and today is one of my favorites. I just realized I'm missing one book. <laughs> Number ones are on the wall. Sorry about that. And this is none other than the horror epic by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez, Lock and Key. And Lock and Key is one of my all-time favorite reads. Uh, so well done, so beautifully drawn. Um, Joe Hill, if you are unfamiliar, is the son of Stephen King. He did not use his father's name because he did not want to gain notoriety or popularity through trading on his father's name. So he used pseudonyms, Joe Hill being the most common one in order to put out his horror work, which consists of novels and some comics, uh, of which Lock and Key is one of them. So it starts off as there are basically six um, mini volumes, six issues each volume. Uh, this one is obviously number one, Lock and Key. This is the A cover. I believe there is a B cover that's very, very similar, so it's hard to tell um, with the difference. Or not a B cover, there's like a second print, I think. Uh, as we get into it, there is a horrific murder that is um, gorgeously, I don't want to say beautifully, but gorgeously depicted in the beginning. And this father of this family is killed while they're on summer vacation. Uh, so the mother, who is has problems with alcohol, uh, takes the family to uh, Hill House, to Key House in, um, I said Hill House, to Key House in Massachusetts, which uh, is a house that is haunted. Um, and has keys that have magical powers. Uh, it turns out that the person who killed the father was one of the father's um, students. Father was a guidance counselor at a high school. Um, this particular person was a little messed in the head. Followed the family to uh, to Massachusetts, where um, this I'll call her lady, but it switches genders very simply in the well house, uh, controlled him, used him to kill the family, get them here, help him, her escape. Uh, I know that sounds like a lot, but uh, it's all, all part of it. This is Kinsey. This is the daughter of the family. That's Sam Lesser. He uh, finds his, um, how we put it, finds his end pretty quickly. But now that the other person is out of the well house, uh, they're looking for the keys and you know one of the great things about this series and the keys in general and the whole folklore is that adults don't remember what's going on adults don't know so the kids find a lot of um clues that indicate oh uh my parents knew about this my dad knew about this all his friends knew about this but of course once they are older um, they forget about it. So it's very much like only the kids know. So this first one, it doesn't actually say it on the book, but this is all called Welcome to Lovecraft. Lovecraft is the name of uh, the town where Key House is, and also a shout out to H.P. Lovecraft. The second series in the volumes called uh, Head Games, and I'm only showing the cover in Full Run Fridays, but there is some absolutely spectacular art. The head key allows you to open up somebody's key and see what's going on inside their brain. I'm just going to let you look at this. This is Bodie, the youngest of the three siblings in the Locke family. Um, and when they actually opened his head and looked inside his brain, the artwork, it's a two-page splash that shows inside his brain, inside the mind of a child. It's just brilliant. Um, really, really well done. A tight story, a story that, that makes sense. Um, some covers that play on popular horror covers. And there's Head Games issue three and four. And this is one of, I think, fear or anxiety that is taken from inside uh, one of the kids' heads and um, kept in a jar. And they're trying to let it not break out. All sorts of crazy stuff like that. This is the um, uncle of the family. Right? And then five and six of Head Games. Move into the third arc, and we have Crown of Shadows. 
So there's a shadow key. There is um, lots of different keys. There's Kinsey again. They find a um, uh, basically a, not a well. Um, they find just uh, by cliffs. They're on the water, and the cliffs go into a cave. Oh my god, I got a stain on my shirt. I just realized that. Um, <laughs> olive oil. We were just dipping up cheese and bread and olive oil for dinner tonight. Damn, I'm gonna have to wash that up. Anyway, they um. The chambers in the cave are, are controlled by a flood station, and of course, shenanigans <laughs> ensue down there. Uh, last couple of Crown of Shadows, uh, you can see right here, if you have the shadow key, it releases these awful monsters. <laughs> There's Bodhi right there, trying to get people's attention. Really kind of beautiful, beautiful artwork stuff. Um, Really like this one. This is a free comic book day one. You can see what happens if you get the giant key. Right, there you go. Free comic book day. Giant sized action. Dun, dun, dun. I think uh, that is actually issue five of Crown of Shadows. And then there's issue six of Crown of Shadows. There's lots of other keys I haven't talked about. There's the um, one key where you go into like a closet and you come out anywhere else you want in the world. There's ones that turn you into ghosts, ones that make you invisible. Any power you can think of, the keys will um, give them to you. Keys to the Kingdom, this issue with the birds was absolutely phenomenal. I, I highly suggest you read that. If you ever get a chance to look at this series, they've collected them in soft cover, hard cover, in treasury editions, in large format editions. There's lots of different ways you can read Lock and Key. Um, keys to the Kingdom three and then four and so this gi joe action figure there's a a kid in this who becomes friends with bode whose uh, mother and grandmother i guess um were around the time of the Locke family's father and knew them but of course the grandmother is just bitter and old and the the mother doesn't remember any of this but they love their kid and their kid um can actually it talks to his uh action figures right he's, he's uh, autistic and he communicates with his action figures but the action figures actually communicate back with him and help him understand what's going on and help him plot to help the the lock family escape um there was something with the music box <laughs> i actually forget what um but there is keys to the kingdom issue five keys to the kingdom issue six i mean just look at that artwork it's just it's just beautiful beautiful phenomenal stuff uh and and you know it, this is one of those horror stories where you can actually get scared reading some of it this was um clockworks number one so kind of like a time key and obviously they're going back in time to the revolutionary war era there um <laughs> what happens when your anxieties and fears that have been locked in a glass jar escape and go on a rampage it's clockworks issue two three and then four kind of like mirror images of each other which i thought was kind of cool clearly evil is ascendant here um bad guy who is now in the form of a male uh is killing people left and right and getting himself uh the crown which is very powerful tool it's made of the whispering iron which is what the keys are made out of uh really nice um so after clockworks the last one was omega and something cool that they do here i don't know if you can see um right up there above the idw it says in six issues it's all over so it's actually been doing that through every series counting down uh so that is a cover b just showing the different keys and that's the cover A to number one. So this is called Omega number one. Um, Omega number two. And three. I love how some of these uh, covers reference each other. And you kind of like doing opposites or dualities. There's four. All right, bringing the, the light up towards, the, um, well, yeah, out towards the water. And then bringing the gun towards the cliff. Both of the hands holding them up. I just love that. Really well done. And let's see. After Omega, they were going to finish with Alpha. But then, so that was Omega 5 and 6, or 4 and 5. right? And then, instead of Omega 6, they went to Alpha. And they did Alpha 1 and 2. And at this point, like most of this, I was collecting in back issues. 
I kind of read the first trade and then went out and started collecting stuff. But once Alpha came out, I was able to start ordering lots and lots. That's the mother. Um, lots and lots of uh, variants, uh, of which this is one of my absolute favorites. That's Kinsey and her uh, boyfriend at the time. Um, or a friend. I think they actually ended up not hooking up. You can see here that Key House got destroyed. Everything was bad, or was it? One of the reasons why they went with um, um, Alpha 2 and not just Alpha 1. And here is Alpha 2. I don't know which cover this is. This is by, uh, Biz, I guess, Simon Bisley. Um, they actually end up saving the youngest son who, spoiler alert, something bad had happened to. He died. I just started giving it away. And I ain't going to re-record this video. So, um, But they brought him back from the dead. This was a little one-shot they did called Keys to the Kingdom, which just... Um, showed all the keys and explained how the keys were made going back to like the 19th century 1800s and i love the coloring on this um second printing of keys of the kingdom always thought that was beautiful so that's like basically the story and then there is just lots of these like crossovers and one shots that are really really cool and since this is full run i'll just show you what i got this is grindhouse which was like um, a particularly grotesque story that took place during like the 1920s, I guess. Um, you know, it's another generation in the lock house that of course the sub subsequent generation won't remember and the preceding generation won't remember, but the current generation uses the keys to defend themselves from, uh, burglars and, um, people, uh, coming in and trying to do wrong to the family in their house. This is a reprint of the first issue. Then there was a story called Small World that, again, was a one-shot. And I think I got, like, five of the, the variants for Small World. Boom, 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 boom. And then it went quiet for a number of years. And then they came out with Dog Days, <laughs> which was a fun issue. Uh, and, again, we have uh, a Small World variant there. I think basically everybody in the house or something went went like miniature because of one of the keys and they had to fight their way out against bad guys and evil and all that pale battalions was this really cool crossover during the world war one era um when uh some of the one of the locked children went to fight against um father's wishes and bad things ensued there was actually some really beautiful writing here on the eastern front in europe or the western uh, eastern front in europe <laughs> And it got me absolutely terrified. Uh, this is a retailer incentive cover. Uh, second retailer incentive cover. Retail exclusive cover. A really beautiful colored cover. Um, so obviously I got a lot of number ones for Pale Battalions. There's two and three. And then there was this crossover that I'm not even sure I have fully read everything. I think I was not happy to discover that this existed um and so i resisted <laughs> i didn't mean to rhyme there but this was a crossover with one of my absolute all-time favorite properties sandman so now we have sandman and lock and key exist in the same universe the artwork is still beautiful the concept is great but like i don't know that i needed this crossover and this this helen gone issue here i honestly don't know for a fact if i've read that or not i can't recall but just look at this that uh symbol of death there that's so cool and then i have two oh there's a black and white version and then she's wearing it in this one i think that's the is that the librarian um one of the characters from the Sandman universe, and then this cover here. And so I've got some collected editions uh, as well, but those are all my issues of Lock and Key. I hope I did it justice. Like I said, I'm exhausted. School just started. It kind of felt like I was rambling and missing some points. You know, JP did a great, uh, absolutely great breakdown of this. He had me and Comic Man Andy on, some other people talking about Lock and Key one of the greatest comics ever written and i will stand by that uh, especially the original story in the original six volumes highly suggest you read it if you haven't had the chance to 
And on that note, this has been Full Run Friday. I think it's episode eight. You all have a wonderful day.